Um, hello, my name is Agata Morka. I am communications officer at Spark Europe, and I would like to welcome you to this session of Open Education Champions. In this series, we talk to important open uh, education advocates and actors, asking them to share their experiences um, and discuss the importance of open education, and especially also with, uh, with a focus on the role of librarians in this process. So today, it's my pleasure to welcome Melissa Heitman here today. So Melissa is Director of Learning, Teaching and Web Services and Assistant Principal at the University of Edinburgh. So, um, Melissa, you describe, you, you describe yourself as a futurist interested in all things digital in higher education. Um, and this year, um, you actually spoke uh, quite a lot about open education in the context of COVID-19 and the role uh, it will play on, on a post-pandemic planet. And in one of your recent talks, um, you said, it's not okay to not understand how e-learning works anymore. So today I would like to talk to you specifically about how open education resources work and how you work with them at the University of Edinburgh. So welcome. Um, let me start with, uh, with the first question here. So uh, this is a little bit about your background. So can you tell us a little bit more about your work with OER and uh, open pedagogy and more bro or open pe pedagogy more broadly at the University of Edinburgh? And how did you become involved um, in open education to begin with? And were there any librarians uh, on, on, on your path there to, to somehow support you on, on this journey? Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm not a librarian, um, but I'm library adjacent because I think that learning technologists and librarians do need to work very closely together because we are all in the same business about resources and learning resources. Um, learning technologists tend to work with user created resources, so resources that are created by the teachers or by the learners and thinking about how those can be made open. And librarians tend to be working with published resources or university collections and archives and thinking about how those can be made open. So what we have in common is a shared interest in the licensing, knowing where the material has come from, where all the bits of it have come from, whether there's third party copyright in there, all the different aspects of copyright. And I've been involved with open educational resources now at University of Leeds, University of Oxford and University of Edinburgh. And for each of those institutions, um, the position with regard to open educational resources is about making materials available to other people to use, but also about understanding more about the licensing and reuse of teaching materials generally. Great. Um, I am very much interested in this uh, angle of, uh, of licensing and especially third party rights materials. I think that that's, uh, it's a huge topic and still um, not really, really resolved in, in a way as to what, what to do with them. Um, who has benefited from open education at your institution, uh, as well as beyond your institution, of course? And uh, what would you say um, are the, the key benefits of open resources, of open educational resources? I think that everyone in the university benefits from having open educational resources activity in the institution, even if they're not quite doing it themselves. It does mean that there's a, a raised, a heightened understanding of around copyright and reuse, and that we create teaching materials for courses using other people's materials, but also teachers produce their own materials and share those um, with, with their own students, but hopefully more widely as well. Um, Open educational resources, I think, fits very much with the university's missions as civic um, institutions with a, a mission or values around extending access to education. And so where there are um, institutions who are resource rich with many teaching materials, um, it's part of what a university is all about, is to think about how we can share that um, with other teachers and we can share it in formats and with licenses that say it's okay to be 
reused and adapted. And those licenses that allow reuse and adaptation are really key for education because every teacher knows that they like to adapt their materials to their particular teaching context. And sometimes it's quite hard to reuse other people's materials. So open educational resources allow that adaptation and reuse. So partly we're sharing our resources with anybody who might want to use them. Partly it benefits the institution in that we can use our materials and reuse them within the institution. If we need to move the materials from one format to another or from one platform to another, having a really clear understanding about the copyright, who made the materials and all the copyrights that are involved in them, mean that we can quite quickly uh, be agile in terms of moving material from one platform to another. And that was partly what I was speaking about at the Aperio conference about how the university was able to be more resilient during COVID because we had that greater understanding about our teaching materials, where they were kept, where we could put them and how we could use them online. Wonderful, thank you. And um, what do you see as key successes of, of open education movement so far, uh, starting from your own experience? I think the big successes have been partly to do with um, sharing materials from places where they are created to where they can be used. So for instance, the University of Edinburgh shares a lot of materials directly into schools and we map those materials against the curriculum for Scottish schools. Mm -hmm. um, and we are able to share those with teachers to uh, benefit uh, the, anybody who's teaching in, in Scotland, um, because we understand the curriculum there and the, the reuse. But I think that one of the um, big benefits, uh, big achievements of the movement has been to have open educational resources so clearly cited as part of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So it's it, OER is mentioned specifically as something which is important for um, all aspects of equality and inclusion in the world. And that access to education for all is one of the UN sustainability goals. And that fits very well with the mission and vision of so many universities that are aligning themselves with those, the UN SDGs. Speaking about a vision, a vision for the future, what, what do you think? What, what still needs to be done for open education to, to truly take hold? Uh, what are still the most pressing challenges that you see? I think there are many institutions who haven't uh, perhaps invested as much as they should in supporting colleagues to make these choices to create um, open educational resources and to share them. But I think that where the institutions are doing that, where there's an OER support service, where there's policy in place, the institutions are seeing real benefits and being able to map that against their university missions um, and values. So I think that we will see more institutions um, making a, a public, taking a public position um, and being proud of their open educational resources now. Um, and that will be, I think, a big coming of age for OER. Absolutely, and um, what are your plans uh, for the future with open education? Your plans and your institution's plan, plans as well? Well, my plan is to continue to ensure that University of Edinburgh is leading in this area. Um, I want to maintain our position as one of the largest providers of open educational resources, um, certainly in UK higher education. Um, and as well as being a producer of open educational resources, I'm also increasingly feeling that we need to um, make more of our opportunities to consume ed open educational resources from other places. So the more that we can diversify our curriculum um, and use teaching materials from other parts of the world, the richer the education that we offer the University of Edinburgh students is. And I think that one of the big challenges for higher education is those silos, that people aren't very good at reusing other people's materials. Um, but I think that actually for University of Edinburgh, because we have such an international and diverse student group mm -hmm. and we teach so many uh, different courses, we have a huge curriculum at University of Edinburgh. I think that open practice 
um, that uh, welcoming in of materials from other places really is part of the enrichment that we can bring for our students. Absolutely. Thank you very much. <laughs>